Hello again. We're looking at part three in the tithing study. And this part we're going to get into um, the tithing in the New Testament, you know, meaning um, the Gospels, Matthew and, and Luke is where it talks about it. And then also transition, see it, look at what um, tithing would have, what would have happened with tithing as the we transition to the church period in the book of Acts. And then consider some of the spiritual applications that people who teach tithing try to make and try to make sense of um, those those things. So the next place we want to start to look at here is Matthew 23, 23. And uh, when citing these passages to show that Jesus supported tithing, we have to remember a couple of things. Uh, number one would be that Jesus' statements were pertaining to the scribes and the Pharisees, meaning the Jews, uh, in matters of the law because they were still doctrinally in the Old Testament. And so uh, if somebody's watching this and you're not, you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, um, a lot of people do not understand that the New Testament does not start with a book called Matthew. It starts with the death of Jesus Christ. And you can read about that in, Matt, in Hebrews chapter 9, verses 15 to 17. It says, And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead, otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. So the New Testament does not begin in Matthew, it begins when Jesus dies. And a lot of people don't know this, and so when they're, they ask about tithing, and um, you know, pastors or uh, teachers will say, well, see, Jesus, Jesus approved of tithing, and that's in the New Testament. Well, it's not actually in the New Testament. It's in a book in the New Testament, but you're still under the law in Matthew. So let's look at Matthew 23. 23 and see what Jesus said about tithing and let's see that says when they had heard these words they marveled and left him and went their way uh, this I'm oh, sorry that was 22 the same day came him the Sadducees which say there is no resurrection I'm sorry that's 22 chapter 22 23 okay I think I got it now Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye have to done, and not to leave the other undone. So again, we see in Matthew 23, 23, that the tithe there is herbs. Um, look at Luke 11:42. Luke chapter 11, verse 42. This is a parallel passage to that. It says, But woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs, and pass over judgment and the love of God. These ought ye have to have done, and not to leave the other undone. So again, you see, you see that we're still in under the, the law when he's talking to the scribes and the Pharisees and he's telling them that about they were tithing herbs, mint, anise, cumin, rue. Um, so we're still under the law of Moses. We're not actually in the New Testament. Uh, and then number two, uh, the items tithed were once again food. So uh, mint, anise, cumin, rue, all manner of herbs. It was not money. So again, um, as you get into the Gospels there, and they're under the law still, they're still tithing herbs, they're not tithing money. And I think, I don't have this in my notes, but I think in Luke 18, see if I can find this quickly, Luke 18. Um, the two men in the temple. Luke 18, verse 13, uh, no, Luke 18, verse 12, well, let's start in verse 11, 
The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as the other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, and, or even as this publican. I fast twice in, a, in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. So somebody may use that and see, see, he gives, he gives tithes of all that he possessed, not just food. Well, you have to look at the context of what tithing was under the law. So uh, just because it says all that, that he possessed, it wasn't all that he possessed. It was all the increase of the land um, and of the, uh, his any flocks that he would have had. So you don't just use one verse again to overthrow uh, the multitude of scriptures that show that tithing under the law was um, herbs or seed of the land and fruit and flocks. Uh, so that doesn't work there. <clears throat> so again, wrap, to wrap up uh, that section, in, in Matthew and Luke, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and they're tithing herbs, not money. So now, so that's the basically the end of tithing in the Old Testament. Now let's consider some things in um, as we go into the Book of Acts when the when the church starts. Um, <clears throat> in Acts fifteen, it's just this gets more into not so much tithing, but um, thinking about tithing and what would have happened um, in that time period. So in Acts 15, we find Paul before the apostles and elders of the church in Jerusalem concerning the matter of the Gentiles being circumcised and keeping the law. See verse 24 in Acts 15. To which they affirmed they gave no such commandment. Remember, it's keeping, keeping the law. <coughs> Excuse me. The apostles and elders declare that there should be no greater burden laid on them, meaning the Gentile church, than the necessary things found in verse 29 namely abstaining from meats, sacrifice to idols, things strangled, fornication, and eating blood. So this has said nothing about tithing. If it's such a big, important thing, do you not think that they would have mentioned tithing? Uh, notice in Acts 21, verses 20 to 25, there are Jewish believers who are also zealous of the law. So keep that in mind. Here's believers zealous of the law. This would include tithing which would have been food offered according to the law, not 10% of their income paid to their local church assembly. Therefore, any tithes collected by the Jewish Christians would have been paid to support the temple system. And that would have been according to the law. They would not have been collecting money. Further, the Gentiles would not have been expected to keep the tithe because they did not have any part of the inheritance in the land with which the Israelites were commanded to support the Levites and the priest <coughs> with the fruits and flocks thereof. So we see here that um, if you think about tithing and those Jews who were zealous of the law, they would not e have even thought about teaching the Gentiles about tithing because they had, they had, Gentiles had no part in the law, no part in tithing to the temple system. So that would have never even came into their minds. Uh, no one would have been tithing to their money to their local church. Um, now let's consider some spiritual applications here. Uh, knowing that the Israelites were only commanded to tithe their crops and clean beasts, it becomes obvious that the tithe was not a tenth of their income. Jews who earned livings, now this is probably one of the most important things that you could point out to someone who is trying to persuade you that you need to tithe, give a tenth of your income to their church. This is, you can point this out, and no one really has an explanation for it. And that's because tithing is not really for the Christian. Now, <clears throat> Jews who earn livings from many vocations, such as cook, tailor, carpenter, metal worker, attorney, physician, baker, fisherman, potter, tax collector, etc., anybody who's not being a farmer uh, would not have tithed a tenth of the money that they earned from these occupations because it was not commanded in the law. This is not to say that they would not have freely offered gifts from these earnings. Uh, there's obviously, you can obviously read about uh, people uh, doing their alms. Jesus talks about doing your alms and not letting your right hand know what your left hand's doing. And um, Cornelius um, did his alms, his alms and 
something else was remembered um, by God when he sent um, Peter to preach the gospel to him. So anyway, they would not, uh, it's not to say that they, these people uh, who, did, who had these other jobs would not have uh, offered freely gifts from these earnings, <clears throat> but they weren't commanded to pay 10% of this income. So think about this. Do you realize that Jesus, who was a carpenter, Matthew, tax collector, Peter, Andrew, James, John, who were fishermen, did not tithe? If they did, it was only from their flocks, herds, and crops, if they had any. Um, but, you know, somebody who's, who's earning their living from fishing, they probably have little time to tend to flocks and, and crops, unless it's a small garden or something like that. It was not money earned from it was not from money earned in, in carpentry fishing or tax collecting neither would have paul have tithed from his tent making how can we then require christians to do something that jews were not even commanded to do see acts 15 28 where they were not going to lay any greater burden on them other than the three or four things that they had named there um so that pretty much um that simple thought there concerning those Jews under the law who had different jobs other than tending gardens and, and their fields or herding their flocks, um, they wouldn't have tithed anything. They, they were prohibited from tithing because they weren't, that wasn't something that was commanded to be tithed. <clears throat> I also believe it's erroneous to compare the temple storeroom to the church house for two reasons. As shown earlier in this study, uh, which um, would have been one of the previous videos. The temple storeroom had only held a fraction of the tithe of the nation. And when the verse says, all the tithes in Malachi, the context of what was to be brought according to the law must be understood. Secondly, church houses did not exist for several hundred years after Calvary. There were no common church buildings to bring your money. Church was often held in homes. See Acts 2.46, Acts 5.42, Acts 8, 3, Acts 12, 12, and Acts 20, 20. This application of the temple to the church house would not have existed until church buildings began to be built. Further, when the church house project was funded by the people, it was not commanded a portion of their it was not a commanded portion of their income or property that was given to meet these needs, but it was of their free will as God stirred their hearts. Excuse me, you can read about this in Exodus 35, 5, and verse 21. And also read Ezra chapter 1 when they rebuilt the temple. Exodus 35 is where they're talking about um, building the tabernacle. So um, let's just look at that real quick. <clears throat> Exodus, Genesis, Exodus 35. I have verse 5, so you can read the entire chapter of Exodus 35. Um, we're going to read Exodus 35, verse 5. Uh, let's read verse 4 first. And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it, an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and and brass, and blue, and purple, and scarlet, fine linen, and goats, goat's hair, and ram skins dyed red, and badger skins, and shittim wood, and oil for the light, and spices for anointing oil, and for the sweet incense, uh, and onyx stones, and stones to be set for the ephod, and for the breastplate. And every wise hearted among you shall come, and hath, and make all that the Lord hath commanded, the tabernacle, his tent, his covering, his tatches, uh, his boards, his bars, his pillars, his, and his sockets, the ark and the staves thereof, with the mercy seat and the veil of the covering, and the table and his staves and all the vessels and the shoe bread, the candlestick also for the light and his furniture and his lamps and uh, the oil for the light. I'm not going to keep reading, but he, he gives a list of all the things that they're supposed to bring. Uh, in verse 20, And all the congregation of the children of Israel departed, from the presence of Moses, and they came, every one whose heart stirred him up, and every one who, whom his spirit made willing, and they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation, 
and for all his service and for the holy garments. Um, and then there is a, let me see here. Men, rulers, bot, onyx. Did I have that marked? Ah, Exodus 36 that we're going to jump to. So you can read about, about all that. And then Exodus 36, verses 5 to 7. So these these gifts that were uh, given for the, it was out of the, the, uh, the way that the Lord stirred the hearts of men to give uh, according to uh, what, basically what they purposed in their hearts. Um... Uh, and they came, everyone whose heart stirred him up, everyone whose his spirit made will, of everyone whom his spirit made willing. So it was of their own will that they um, brought these offerings for the tabernacle. This was not a commandment. Uh, Exodus thirty six verse verses five to seven. <clears throat> and they spake unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded to make. And Moses gave commandment and. They caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing, for the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it, and too much. So, you know, you, you do not need to come. If so there's something for an assembly that needs to be done, um, and the people are, are agreeing or willing, you don't need to command somebody. To bring in X percent or this sum uh, for that purpose, God will make sure that they're according to how He stirs their hearts. That whoever, based on what they have, they uh, each person brings enough for that particular uh, thing to be done. Um, so you can see when when uh, there was a let's call it a church project. You know, looking at the tabernacle here being built. Um, they did not, they, they weren't commanded, but it was of their free will and based on their free will, what they brought, it was more than enough. So nowhere in the new Testament, are there any Christian meeting houses likened to the old Testament temple? Rather the Christian is the temple of God. See first Corinthians three, nine, 16 and chapter six, verse 19. This is not to condemn Christians who have funded a dedicated building to meet in. But simply stating a scriptural fact, okay, there's a fact. There's no church buildings in the New Testament. So um, those were uh, basically, I summarized there, my two points, the two reasons I believe that comparing the, the church building or house to the temple is uh, a, a poor application. Um, because, let's see, um, there was only a fraction of the tithe the nation could be brought to the to the temple. It wasn't bring all your tithe. It wasn't every tithe brought to the temple. Um, and then church houses did not exist several hundred years after Calvary. So in order for something to be spiritually applicable today, it would have had to have been spiritually applicable when those New Testament scriptures were written that Paul wrote. Because, you know, something doesn't become relevant today that wasn't then. <clears throat> um the temple and the priest are often compared to the church house and the pastor in different ways. Paul does make a spiritual application of the Levites to those who minister the word of God in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 13 and 14. Um, with respect to earning a living, Paul is simply showing that those who sow spiritual things to the brethren should be able to partake of carnal things as well and not making a wholesale application of Old Testament tithing to the New Testament, which I've seen somebody try to do that and say, well, you know, the, you've got the Old Testament Levites and priests, and they ministered the, the things of the temple. And so Paul is saying that, you know, these uh, pastors today are should be supported in exactly the same way that they were supported. And then they fail to see that they weren't supported by money, they were supported by food. But yet, they, they, it's kind of like a, a partial spiritual application where they, they want to take the parts that they like and apply it, um, ignoring other parts that don't make sense. <clears throat>
which of course you can't. I mean, you can do, but it's wrong. Um, <clears throat> let's see. We must be mindful that we do not mistakenly make a spiritual application of the Old Testament when a more direct doctrinal teaching prevails. So spiritual applications are fine as long as it's not overridden by uh, a doctrinal teaching that, that Paul makes or one of the other apostles in, in you know, the New Testament epistles. Uh, for example, consider that priests and Levites had no inheritance in the land. Okay, so we're supposed to support you know, the church leaders with our tithe because the Levites and priests were supported by the tithe, right? So if we liken a priest and the temple to a pastor and a church for the tithing principle, it should it then be required as a spiritual application that the church elders have no privately owned property of their own, right? Because the priests and the Levites didn't. So, you know, you can be supported by the tithing, but you don't get to own anything then. That would be a, a valid application as well. But obviously, that's not the right application. And neither is temple tithing to New Testament church tithing. Obviously, Paul and others had their own wares, which they sold to provide for themselves. See Acts 18.3, 1 Thessalonians 2, verses 9 and 10, 2 Thessalonians 3, 8-14, as well as owned their own property. See 2 Timothy 4.13, uh, that were, uh, was obtained from their own labors, whereas the priests and Levites did not. So you can see that there were the, the lead church leaders had their own things and worked different jobs where the Priests and Levites did not. They were only able, well, they, they did in certain cases when they weren't being supplied by the the, um, the the rest of the children of Israel, and then the temple went into disrepair, but they weren't supposed to. They were only supposed to serve the temple. Uh, that was their only vocation or job, I guess you could say, where in the New Testament there's not. Um, the Bible does give a more direct application of Old Testament priests to all Christians. See Revelation uh, chapter 1 verse 6. Now that the priesthood has changed from carnal to spiritual, see Hebrews 11 verses, or I'm sorry, Hebrews 7 verses 11 and 12. Uh, priests did not tithe but did give gifts and offerings. And one last spiritual application to consider is that the church is often compared to the children in the wilderness. I'm sure you've heard that. You know, we've come out of Egypt having been delivered from, from it, um, which is a type of the world, and then by applying the blood of the Lamb on the doorpost, type of Jesus Christ's blood, and not yet having reached the promised land, which is a type of heaven, the children of, the children of Israel in the wilderness, which is a type of the church, it's not the church, but a type of the church, did not tithe. So when the children of Israel who were, it, it, were in the wilderness, they didn't tithe kind of interesting you have all those applications and then also that particular um, kind of uh, note I guess you could say so let's summarize this then um, through this study you know we've looked at tithing before the law part one we've looked at tithing by the children of Israel part two and then we've looked at how that would work which it doesn't but we've looked at the transition and, and applied some you know through some meditation I was able to make some uh, and, and other things I've studied make some critical thinking applications and uh, to what's going on in the New Testament and the church period. Um, but I hope through this study that it's become clear here that uh, I commanded, let's say I'm saying commanded 10% tithe of the Christian's earned income to be paid to the local church has no basis in scripture, none. Now, if you feel like God has put on your heart to give 10% of your income to the place that, that you meet, by all means, do that. All I'm saying is that you're not commanded to do that. There's no command to give 10% or you're robbing God and you're going to be cursed. That is false. Um, <clears throat> spiritualizations of Old Testament tithing to the New Testament have been examined and shown to be misapplied. Uh, tithing is found nowhere in the New Testament after the cross with the exception of Hebrews, where it was not applied to the Christian, but described with respect to the changing of the priesthood from carnal to spiritual. Uh, as pertaining to Israel, we discovered the following. The holy biblical tithe was very narrowly defined and limited by God himself. True biblical tithes were always, number one, only food, number two, 
only from the farms and herds, three, of only Israelites, four, who only lived inside God's holy land, <clears throat> the national boundary of Israel. So any Jews that were living actually outside of Israel, even if they were farming and raising crops outside of, of Israel, they weren't allowed to tithe. It had to be from the land. It said we, we learned that and, and read about it in uh, part two. Um, it was only under the Old Testament terms, or you could still use Old Covenant. Uh, it was the increase of which could only be gathered by what God produced. And seven was actually well over 10% of the fields and the flocks. So if somebody wants to tithe today, uh, also remind them that, well, you better be giving about 23% because there were two other tithes, not just the tithe to the Levites. Uh, therefore, number one, non-food items could not be tithed. Two, clean wild game animals and fish could not be tithed. Three, non-Israelites could not tithe. Four, food from outside God's holy land of Israel could not be tithed. Five, legitimate tithing did not occur when there was no Levitical priesthood. Six, tithes did not come from what man's hands created, produced, or caught by hunting, fishing, or any other craft that we, we looked at carpentry, metalworking, all that stuff. And number seven, Israelites did not tithe when they were not in the land. So um, this will now conclude the tithing portion of the study. And in the next section, I will discuss the principles laid out for New Testament tithing. So there's be another video later I'll do, hopefully shortly, that you know say, okay, I don't tithe, well, what do I do in the New Testament as far as giving in the church? So we'll look at that and Again, there's a lot of liberty with that, and, and you're not really... Uh, there are certain things that, that you should do, we'll look at, but there's a lot of liberty with, with giving in the New Testament. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that video and, and learned something that you didn't before, and hopefully it was, a, it was a help to somebody who was still struggling with, you know, should I tithe, should I not? Um, but uh, that'll, that'll do it for this video, and I'll see you next time. Have a good day.